Hey, what's going on everyone? Richard Blaze here, live from my home kitchen, and I'm so happy that you are joining me where I'm going to be featuring some amazing recipes because I've teamed up with the American Heart Association, who's teamed up with Eglin's Best Eggs, uh, and we are doing this all for the Healthy for Good initiative, uh, which is giving people tons of resources to create and maintain healthy, long-term habits, okay? Some of those habits include cooking delicious food with your family. Today I'm gonna to cook one of my favorite uh, healthier recipes. It is zucchini parmesan pancakes. So gonna start with zucchini, of course. This is an amazing summertime vegetable, uh, super healthy and easy to cook. Uh, then we're gonna also have some eggs, and then we have some fresh herbs, we have some parmesan, uh, we have uh, onions, black pepper, flour, and we're gonna mix that all together, make these pancakes, and serve it with some low-fat Greek yogurt. We're gonna grate this zucchini. It's gonna be the base of our recipe. Uh, listen, this is an iconic summertime vegetable. And of course, listen, if, if we wanna live a little healthier, uh, you gotta eat more vegetables. I personally have lost like 80 pounds over the last 10 or so years, uh, and a lot of it comes uh, from just eating lots of vegetables, right? Because they're good for you. Zucchini, one of my favorite summertime ones. And so I'm gonna grate this zucchini. I'm using uh, a standard box grater. If you've cooked at home before, this could be one of those situations where if you've ever grated your thumb, it's not a good thing. I have one that's grated already. Uh, so this is two medium-sized zucchinis or one large zucchini and one small one, all right? Do the math. Right? That's one of the things actually that I love so much about cooking, especially as I'm cooking with my family, is that when you are cooking, there is math involved, there's science involved, there's history, you're talking about culture. Uh, there's so much to be learned, not just about how to cook, but about so many, about the world basically. All right, so my zucchini is shredded. I'm going to put it into this mixing bowl and then I'm going to combine our dry ingredients uh, for this recipe, combining the dry ingredients. Does not sound like an incredibly dynamic thing to do, but it is crucial to any sort of batter or cake, right? So we're gonna start with a little bit of AP flour. So we have all-purpose flour. There we go. Oh, gotta get it all in there. Okay, all AP flour. We're gonna add our grated Parmesan. Uh, the great thing about the Parmesan is that it's gonna add two things. It's going to add natural salinity or salt, which is gonna make this tasty. It's also going to add umami. You hear this all the time on food TV shows. Umami is what like, makes your mouth water and it's present in a lot of foods that we crave, like pizza and bacon cheeseburgers and bowls of steamy ramen, umami, okay? You wanna use that in your recipes, especially if your family's up for like, I don't know, one of these TV show challenges, right? Umami wins championships, that's what I'm saying. I've added some shallots. If you don't have shallots, you could add some onions. They're pretty much the same thing. They're in the same family. We're gonna add a little bit of black pepper. This is some baking powder. Uh, this is some fresh thyme. If you don't have any fresh thyme, dried thyme is gonna be fine. If you're using dry herbs instead of fresh, you probably wanna back off the amount, let's say by at least half, because dried herbs are a lot more powerful uh, than fresh herbs. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, canola oil to this, all right? So that's what we have so far in the bowl. We got the cheese, we got the onions, we got the herbs, the flowers in there. It's time to add uh, the star, maybe. Oh, it's, no, it's not the star, it's the supporting actor of this dish. The star is clearly zucchini, right? If this was a movie, starring zucchini. Uh, but the character actor, if you will, are going to be these eggs, right? So two eggs. I'm gonna do something that's pretty risky. I'm gonna try and do the single hand double egg crack into this bowl. Uh, you don't have to do that. I'm just trying to impress you and show off. We're having lots of fun right now. Here we go, two eggs, one in each hand. I'm gonna crack it on the bowl right into the middle of the bowl. Let's see if I can do it. I need a little bit of inspiration. Drum roll me in, please. Okay, thank you so much and I did it, I did it, I still have it everyone. Listen, if you wanna do the egg any which way that you crack eggs, that's going to work as, as well. Uh, but I do just like, every while, you know what it is, I like practicing, 
right? Because a lot of us were at home. I'm not maybe in my restaurants as much as I would be. I still need to keep the skills sharp. Okay, zucchini now is going to be added to this mixture. First, I'll just start the mixing process a little bit. I like when we add the wet ingredients like the egg to sort of start the mixing process so this all comes together and I don't leave any of this flour up on the side of the bowl. And we're making a pancake. You could probably call this a fritter as well. Although I think when we, when we say the word fritter, we think deep fry, right? And one of the great things about this recipe, again, it's healthier. We're not gonna deep fry it. We're gonna use a minimal amount of canola oil. And now I'm just going to dump the zucchini towards you. And the reason I'm dumping it towards you is so that you can see it a little bit better. So I'm giving celebrity chef tips out. And now you can kind of see, right? As I've taken the time to uh, fold, right? You hear this term fold, uh, just sort of over the top of each other, the batter, the cheese is mixing in with the zucchini and the eggs and the flour, it's all coming together. Uh, the herbs are really speckled in there, really, really nice. I can smell the thyme and the black pepper in here. You wanna make sure when you're cooking, that you are taking the time to, of course, taste things when we start cooking, but also smell things. Aroma is so important to taste. And I can tell you already that this smells delicious. I'm okay if the zucchini sort of breaks down a little bit. I like the idea, especially on the grater, of having long pieces and small little pieces. It's all great. Okay, this is what we're looking for. Um, we have our batter made, and you can see now, I don't see any uh, flour on the side of the bowl. I come right to the camera right there, okay? And it's all coming together, all right? So we're gonna take our batter over to the stove, and it's time to cook our zucchini parmesan pancakes. Okay, so here we go. Now we're on the stove, we're cooking our zucchini parmesan pancakes. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of canola oil in a non-stick pan, right? So just a little bit of oil. Uh, this is enough for probably half of the recipe. You know, a lot of chefs, they have a problem with the non-stick pan, right? There's like, I don't know, there's, there's some ego involved with cooking with a non-stick pan. I like it. Anything that makes your job a little easier, uh, it, it, it makes it a little bit more efficient. To me, the technology is great. So non-stick pan, a little bit of oil, that's gonna help enable us to brown and crisp these pancakes. And the browning of these pancakes is actually called the Maillard reaction. I don't want to get too scientific, but the Maillard reaction, that is the uh, browning of protein that happens to be in the eggs and the flour in this recipe. And it's what makes food uh, more craveable and more delicious. Maillard reaction. And while our pan is heating up, uh, our batter has really, it's just only been a couple of seconds, but you can really see uh, that zucchini and the flour and the parmesan has come together. Really, 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 really nice. Uh, and it is time now to sear our pancakes. The oil's in the pan. I'm on a medium high heat. The most important thing, even with a non-stick pan, is we want the pan to be hot enough so that when we put the batter in the pan that it doesn't stick, even with a non-stick pan, it's just gonna help ensure that it does not stick. So make sure the oil is dispersed all throughout the pan. I can sort of tell that it's Nice and hot. I'll turn the uh, temperature down a little bit right there. Uh, and we'll cook these at a medium high temperature. So uh, we'll do just little pancakes. So I don't know, maybe an, I think it's an eighth of a cup. Seems appropriate, but you make them the size you want. Sort of just make little nice little rounds. The most important thing here isn't exactly the size of how, each, how large each pancake is is that we're not crowding the pan with our zucchini, all right? Because if we crowd the pan, what happens? What happens, Richard Blaze, if you crowd the pan? What's going to happen? Well, uh, one, just like if you've made a, a standard pancake, they could stick together. Uh, two, there's not enough space between pancakes so that they're not gonna cook evenly, they're gonna sort of steam together. So my pancakes are starting to cook, I can hear the sizzle, you want to use these cues, these audio cues, to know if things are going well in the kitchen. These are a good size for me. The serving portion is going to be about four of these cakes per person. All right, which is also great. You get to eat. You know, when you're eating vegetables, you can eat so much, right? Uh, which I love, right? Eat all the veggies you want. 
Um, just sometimes when you use the word pancake too, this is a great way to just get kids to eat things that maybe they wouldn't uh, because pancakes are just yummy and delicious. Uh, but who knew there was, zucchini, there was zucchini in pancakes, right? So we do that a lot when we're cooking for our kids and for our family. We have lots of picky relatives. I'm sure you do too. We even have a relative that doesn't eat green vegetables. But I bet you, you know, Uncle Scott, sorry to call you out, but I bet you you would eat zucchini parmesan pancakes. Would he? Jasmine is my camera op. She, she nodded to me. She can't move the camera. Okay, so I don't want to uh, overcrowd the pan, all right? And that's the most important thing. I could probably squeeze one more in there. I could probably squeeze one more in there. Um, but this is really what you want to see, is that I'm not crowding the pan. And you can even see as I jiggle the pan, they're not sticking to the bottom. That's because one, yes, we're in a non-stick pan, but also because I've given them enough space to cook. I probably could have put one more in there, but I didn't want to mess it up for you. Okay, some people say I'm a perfectionist. I'm really not. You know how many times I feel like I've failed as a cook during this pandemic cooking for my family? My kids aren't here right now, but they would be like, yeah, dad, those things you made were not delicious. They don't even remember what they were. These, I know your family are gonna love. These zucchini parmesan pancakes. Okay, so now I can see they're starting to brown around the edges, and that's letting me know that they are ready to flip. Another thing you can do, I'm using this spatula, but if you were just using a measuring cup, you can just sort of press them down a little bit, all right, to make sure that the surface area is getting nice and brown. And there you go, look at that. That egg that got in there really, really helped us out. It binds all of the vegetables together. It works with the Parmesan. The Parmesan starts to melt, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So back to the stove. I'll turn the heat up a little bit here. Let it cook. A lot of times when we're cooking, we wanna to do too much with the pan. We wanna shake things up. We wanna make fire. I'm talking about myself, but I know a lot of people do that. Let the food cook. You want the pot to be nice and hot so that these don't stick. Again, I'm shaking them a little bit now after they've been in the pan for a second. They're not sticking, so I know that it's hot enough. You know, the other thing when you're cooking on the stove is we're monitoring the heat, right? Um, you know, we're moving around. A lot of classic chefs call it playing the piano, right? Is it the flame hot? Is it low? It was hot to start, that's where I want it, and I'm adjusting it as I see what's happening in the pan. So I'm listening, I'm looking, uh, and this is how we're cooking. We're using all of our senses. Pancakes are looking good. Uh, they are going to finish cooking out of the pan. So I'm gonna start my next batch. Let these finish and rest over here. Um, so you can see them coming from the non-stick pan right over here. Uh, and I'm gonna get ready for our second batch. If you're one of those people who are obsessed about everything being absolutely perfectly circular or square or whatever the shape is, you can get some ring mold cutters if you wanted to take this to like the next level. If you do that, you're gonna have to, well, you're gonna have to send a shout out to the American Heart Association and myself. Uh, so I can see that amazing work that you're doing. That would be how I would take this to the restaurant level. Crispy zucchini Parmesan pancakes ready for your family. Time to plate our dish here. We have some non-fat Greek yogurt. This is gonna be an amazing condiment for this. Okay, and then very simply, this one's just family style. We're just gonna plate our zucchini pancakes around the jar of the sauce right there. Listen, I made some of mine too big, but you know, this is not about uh, perfection. It's about getting healthy, delicious food on the table and having fun in the kitchen, uh, hopefully with your whole family. Your kids are gonna love it, you're gonna love it. It's healthier, it's delicious, it's easy to make. There you go, crispy zucchini Parmesan pancakes brought to you by the American Heart Association. They wanna see, and I wanna see, the dishes that you're cooking, so send them my way on social media. And if you want more recipes like this, you can go to heart.org slash let's cook together. I'm glad we did, and now we're gonna go eat together. Bye.